In the season four reloaded update, we got the unstable rifts added into zombies. Completing this will give you the Mark of the Survivor exclusive camo and will completely reset your schematic cooldown. But before we get into how to activate and enter the unstable rift, here is what you should bring into game. The number one weapon I recommend is the crossbow with the explosive bolts. This can absolutely handle any size horde of zombies and can take out boss zombies pretty well. And this is the build I'm using for it, but the most important part is the blast cap bolts. If you don't have that, I would recommend bringing in the RGL 80 and if you have the conversion kit for it go ahead and throw on the slug round if you want to make it even better if available go ahead and use your dead wire detonators with it as well but for both of these weapons it is a must that you bring in phd that way you don't do self explosive damage and take yourself out for your tactical i recommend a decoy but if you're bringing in the dead wire detonators use gas grenades or stuns and for the lethal i'd recommend any explosive that you're comfortable with or a molotov for your field upgrade if you're planning on going in solo or maybe joining a team later on i'd recommend using a or shroud or energy mine but if you are going in with a pre-made team it is nice to have somebody with healing aura to get people back up besides that you do not need to bring in a legendary aether tool a pack three crystal golden armor plates or the mag of holding if you don't want to because if you're able to get into the unstable rift all your weapons will automatically be upgraded to pack a punch three and legendary they'll have mag of holding applied to them and you will have golden armor plates applied to yourself if you want to you can bring in the hellhound dog bone but i would recommend waiting until you're into the unstable rift to activate it. You'll see why in a minute. But one thing that I really recommend you bring in if you have it is a scorcher case. Once these unstable rifts spawn, only one team can enter it. And once they enter it, it disappears and three monoliths need to be activated again to get another one. So having a scorcher just increases your odds of getting to the rift before another team. I would also recommend bringing in one of each ammo type if you can. If not, you can always go to an aether nest or a stronghold to try to look for the specific ammo mod that you need. And you'll need these ammo mods because once you're in game and you find a monolith they'll have an insignia on the monolith of what ammo mod you need to use to activate them. Once you have a weapon with that ammo mod on, you'll have the option to use your interact button on the monolith and it'll activate a soul box with a circle around it. You have to kill zombies with that weapon that has the ammo mod on it until you fill it up and a reward rift appears. As it stands now, these monoliths can spawn into any tier zone anywhere around the map. So they can be in tier one, tier two, and tier three. Now, I don't know every single spawn for these monoliths yet, but here are the ones that I know currently. And if during the making of this video or after a map is made with all the monoliths on it, I'll make sure to have a link to that down in the description below and pinned in the comments. But until then, if you know the map coordinates where these monoliths are, feel free to leave them down in the comments below to help out other players. Just try to think of these monolith spawns similar to where you get the USBs for the worm fight. They have set select areas where they can spawn at, but they aren't in the same spot every single game. And on top of that, the ammo mods you need for those monoliths can change every game. So use your scorcher or a vehicle to drive to all the areas that you know to see if they pop up. Once you find one, like mentioned before, you need to activate it with a weapon that has that ammo mod on it. And if you're using the crossbow with explosive tips for this, I would recommend just going for headshots on it or meleeing zombies to death if you're in tier one. For whatever reason with the explosive bolts, it won't fill up the soul box on the monolith if they are killed by the explosion from it. They need to be killed by just the bolt. But if you're using the RGL, you can spam it just fine and all those kills will count as long as you have the right ammo mod equipped. But before you complete your third monolith, I would recommend having as many self-revives as you can. Grabbing a jug or the sentry gun kill streaks can also help you out a lot. I would also recommend only really grabbing the perks that you absolutely need when completing these monoliths because once you enter into the unstable rift, you will also get all of your perks. But once you feel like you're equipped enough, go ahead and finish your third monolith and then the unstable rift will spawn. In my experience, this will spawn a few hundred meters away from you even if you are the one to complete the monolith. So using the Scorcher is the best way to increase your odds of getting to it the fastest. But if you don't make it to it in time and another team takes it from you, you can still do three more monoliths and spawn another one in. You can spawn in an unlimited amount of these per game as long as you can find the monoliths to do it. But once you're in, that's where the fun begins. For me, the best strat that I found was using my RGL or my crossbow and heading up to this area through the gated stairs. With the RGL and the crossbow, it's really easy just to spam shots at the ground, but really make sure you're keeping track of your aim ammo and you walk over where you are shooting the zombies at to make sure you're refilling it. Once you're in, you're just gonna have to kill a few zombies. Some elites will show up here and there. More elites will show up per phase. But towards the end of each phase, you will get a boss bounty that'll spawn in that you have to kill to go on to the next phase. And from what I understand, once you kill a boss, there'll be five minutes until the next one shows up. You have to just sit there and hold out killing zombies until the next one comes in. And it's rinse and repeat until you get to the final boss, which is a disciple. This disciple can also spawn in its own elites and there 
there will be a lot of them. The, the difficulty really picks up once this boss spawns in. From my experience, it doesn't look like this boss works exactly the same as the season three Dark Aether boss, where you have to kill his little goons just to be able to do damage to him. But with these explosive weapons, you can do damage to all of them at the same time anyways. But just be cautious because this guy has a lot of health and there will be a lot of elites. So make sure you're still moving around and using your explosives as much as possible. Sometime during your game, you might notice that you don't have the tombstone perk, and that's because there will be a tombstone down on the ground near where you spawned at. In that tombstone will be the one power up that you can use in this portal. So I recommend saving that until the final boss actually shows up. This power up is random, but the two that I've seen come out of this is the nuke and insta kill. And if you're able to power through phase five and beat the final boss, you'll be rewarded with the mark of the survivor camo and have 72 hours taken off of your schematic cooldown time. But that basically sums up how to activate and defeat the unstable rift. If this helped you or you learned something new, go ahead and leave a like on it. If you didn't and you don't, dislike. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.